Hello, my name is Eran and this is part 7 of my Roll20 Master Series. This one is about creating maps for your game. This tab right here is called the Page Toolbar. You can open it by clicking this blue thing or if you click P. This is the page menu as it is seen through VTTES. If you're not using VTTES, you'll have a scrollable set of large images at the top, which I think is less convenient, which is why I'm using this one. Here you can see all your active pages. Later I'll go into what it means. Each page shows an image, which is basically the biggest token you have, the name right here, if you right click it you can rename it, and the page settings is accessible through this cog icon. When you open the page settings you'll see what you saw earlier in the create a game video. This is the settings for the entire page, width, height, background, grid, fog of all, dynamic lighting, it's all here. And you'll also notice a tab for the new updated dynamic lighting, which I'm not going to go into until they fix it up right. But at the bottom of this page you'll notice two new things. First of all, there's this play on load, which allows you to play a specific thing from your jukebox, whether it's tracks or playlists, and you can even choose to play nothing or play nothing and stop everything. There's also the archive page button and the delete page button. This does what you think it does, and if you click archive, this page will move to the archived section, which you can access at the bottom of your pages. Archiving allows you to hide pages that you're not currently using, but you don't want to delete. If you click on a page, you'll open it, and here you have the players marker, which you can move around to any other page. I currently only have one, and if you move it, the players view will change. Another note not a lot of people know is that you can go to the bottom where you have your players. Right now it's just me, but if you have all the other players at the bottom, you can grab individual players and drag them to the page menu and then split the party. This button right here will duplicate the page. Note that currently it only duplicates the settings and not the content of the page. You can have a copy, as you can see there are no tokens on it, and you can see when I click the archive button, it sends it to the archived. And if I click archive, I can see all the archived pages and restore them to active status. Now, when you have your page, you want to add a map to it. First of all, you don't have to. You can just draw shapes with the draw tool, however you like, and create your map this way, but you're basically using Roll20 for this feature, so you'll want to add images to use as maps. First of all, very important, switch to the map layer when you're dealing with maps. Then go to your images tab, and select any image you want to add it to the map. Hopefully, it's a map. So, first things first, find out which map you're gonna use. I want to use the forest clearing, for example, and I noted on the map name that it's 17 by 22. It'll help you a lot when you upload your images to note how many squares they are or how many pixels they are, so you can set your page settings accordingly. I want to use the forest clearing, it's 17 by 22. I'll open the page settings, set width 17, height 22. As you can see, you can also set it by pixels, but if you have grids, it's better. And now I just drag the forest clearing into the map, and it's on the map layer. You can change the size like any token, and you can just drag it to the edge and drag it along, but if you have a TTS, there are other more convenient ways. If you set the size of the page according to the size of the map, you just right-click it, choose Resize Fit, and it's exactly the right size. You can also choose to resize custom and you can set it by square size and you can even tell it to position at the top left. But if you do the previous steps I said correctly, you shouldn't need to use this. Something that VTTS also gives you is if you have a map that you found online that you like, you can just copy the address, right click on the map section and select create token from URL, input the URL here, and the map is imported into your game. However, you still need to figure out the exact size. For example, this one has a uh, core 140 instead of 70, so I need to fit it. This way you don't have to fill up your library if you're running out of space. However, let's say you have a map, you don't know the size of it, you're not sure how it should be, you just have it, maybe you don't even have a grid for it. There is a Roll20 tool that allows you to set it up correctly. If you zoom in on the map and just look at it, this one has a grid so I can use it. If you don't have a grid, just eyeball it. Right click on the map, go to advanced and click align to grid. Now what Roll20 asks of you is to mark a section of the map that represents a 3x3 grid. So like this, roughly. I'll tell you the grid is 26 by 26 pixels. Click align to grid, it'll change the size of the map, and you can align it from here. 
as you can see it's not perfect but if you zoom in you can try to align the maps grid with your own remember that if you drag and hold alt you can position the map however you want and it won't conform to grid now that you have your map you can add tokens for enemies or pcs i even recommend taking markers and putting them on the gm layer so you can uh, mark specific locations with info just open the marker make sure you remember it has something in it and type the gm notes whatever you want and you can notice it has content click it later to read what your notes are now for a couple of advanced features if you have the lighting layer dynamic lighting you want to use it switch over to the lighting layer select the polygon line i prefer to mark walls with a bright cyan color makes it stand out and mark all those areas that you don't want your players to see make sure to enable the dynamic lighting in your page settings like i've shown you before and then when you have a token and a lighting wall you can see that it blocks sight i recommend you use polygons for everything because circles really work badly with dynamic lighting and rectangles don't cover everything i also recommend using some kind of bright color like cyan for uh, walls and some other bright noticeable color like orange for doors but make sure when you put a door on a room that you're covering both open sections and add a handle to it so it won't disappear and you can always grab it also notice that polygons on the lighting layer act exactly like polygons on any other layer and you can change the line width to fit whatever is on your map another neat trick i want to show you in another game is that you can have multiple maps in the same page and then switch them up to change the conditions of the scene for example i have this ship in regular daylight i can send it back and reveal the map that's in fog send it back again i got the regular map back also roll 20 does support some animated images if you want to have an animated background you can probably do that i use it sometimes to generate weather and that's it for creating maps thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video